First of all, I hope you are all safe. I hope your families are safe. It has been an exhausting year and I'm really grateful for your time today. Um, when I was preparing for today, I found myself thinking about my own first year at university. Um, like Jackie said, I grew up in India and I got a scholarship to go to college here in the US. I went from my hometown of Kolkata to Harvard. It was my first time in America. Um, everything was new from bagels in the dining hall to buying phone cards so I could call home to my classes. I was coming from an education system which was largely reliant on exam-oriented rote learning. Um, and we mostly read Indian history, Indian geography, not very much about the rest of the world. So my freshman year, I took a wild array of classes. Um, I took classes on Darfur. At the time, Darfur was very much in the news and East African politics, um, South American history, the Russian borderlands. I was greedy to learn more about the world. I wanted to learn about countries where I had never been. I wanted to learn how people in other societies lived. And I wanted to learn how to think for myself, how to argue and hold an opinion. It was a revelation for me in freshman year to be told that I didn't just have to absorb what a text told me. I could use it as an instrument to think with. And I hope that my novel, A Burning, might be such an instrument. A Burning is about three characters in contemporary India who are chasing big dreams as the society around them makes this dangerous turn toward right-wing nationalism. The central character is a young Muslim woman. Her name is Jeevan. Jeevan would have loved the chance to go to college, but she drops out of high school to support her parents, one of whom is injured as a result of police brutality. All Jeevan wants is to keep her job at a mall to provide her parents a more comfortable life, but she witnesses a terrorist attack on a train and she makes a politically risky comment on Facebook, which gets her in big trouble. She's accused of assisting in the attack. She's imprisoned. The second character is Jeevan's former school teacher. He's a gym teacher who latches on to a local political party. He gets a taste of what it is like to have power in this hugely unequal society. And he has to make certain sacrifices in order to rise within this party. The third and final character is Jeevan's neighbor who is called Lovely. She is a hijra, a person who is marginalized because of her gender and her class. And she holds a huge dream to be a movie star. Everybody mocks this dream of hers, um, but she goes to weekly acting classes, she auditions, she lives with joy and humor and defiance, and she refuses to accept the shame that this society wants to put on her. So when Lovely and the school teacher find themselves in the position of either helping Jeevan in her court case or chasing their own ambitions, they have to figure out what they will do. They have to figure out what their moral center is. And I hope that this space of fiction allows us to ask, what would I do? I started writing this novel from a place of alarm and anger, um, like many countries around the world, certainly including the US. India has been growing more intolerant of minority communities. Extremism has been ascendant. And I was thinking about when we are living under oppressive, discriminatory systems, how do we try to live a meaningful and ethical life? If given the opportunity, do we choose success for ourselves or justice for others? Because one of the tragedies of such a society is that it forces us to make that choice. 
while I was writing A Burning, I didn't think anybody in the US would be interested in it. It's a book set in India, um, but there are stunning similarities between Hindu nationalism and white supremacy. And the questions that the book asks about living within systems and institutions that do not serve us, within a democracy which is profoundly challenged, these questions have been front of mind for us here in the US. Um, hearing from American readers over the past months has made me feel that perhaps the book offers a place of clarity, a prism through which American readers might think about their own democracy, about the immense corruption we've witnessed here, about the oppression of marginalized groups, about the freedoms and unfreedoms of social media, about who gets to tell their own story and who has narratives imposed on them about confronting prejudice and hate, um, but also, and beyond that, um, I hope that the book offers a place for us to think about our own deeply personal ideas of right and wrong. I hope that a burning might move your students to think about what injustice in their own lives looks like. Perhaps they've dealt with racist coworkers at their job. Perhaps they're watching a parent go up against a health insurance company. Perhaps they're worried about climate change. And what kind of ethics do we cultivate in response? My interest in the question of, well, how do we live a moral life? This question has never been abstract for me. Um, I grew up middle class. I went to school. I learned to speak English, but from the school bus, you know, I would see kids my age who were washing dishes by the roadside. Um, they worked at these little restaurants on the sidewalk. And on that school bus, I grew very aware that I was receiving privileges that not every child had. I was going to school. How was that fair? Um, in college, I was very interested in human rights and humanitarian work. Um, and both in college and grad school, I studied anthropology, which is all about, if there are anthropologists in the room, all about listening to other people, watching for surprise, complexity, trying to understand other perspectives on peace, development, justice. And this book, this novel, grew out of those experiences for me. It is definitely part of my task of figuring out how to live in a world which is intricately connected and yet increasingly divided. The last thing I'll say is that as an immigrant in this country, I've been so moved at how my book has been included in discussions of American literature and in conversations like this one today. Um, I'm really grateful for the chance to speak with you alongside these incredible writers. And I'm so grateful for the work you do for your students. Thank you so much.